أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من شر الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الميامين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم مجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال مولانا أبو محمد الحسن العسكري عليه السلام العمري وابنه ثقة صدق مولانا الإمام عليه السلام صلوات إن شاء الله today we are going to continue our history of the 12th Imam عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف we ended till the death of Imam Hassan al-Askari and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved our 12th Imam from the raids which happened to his house and because his brother, uh, his uncle Ja'far he used to whisper to the, uh, to the government about the existence of the 12th Imam and they tried to raid several times but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the 12th Imam and they were not able to capture the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. And we mentioned that they captured his mother. They kept her for like one or two years between prison and between house arrest. But uh, they got uh, involved in bigger crisis, crisis of Abbasi Khilafat, the Abbasi government. And they just uh, overlooked uh, the, and they completely ignored or maybe not completely but uh, they they forgot almost about the issue of the 12th Imam because of the bigger crisis they used to uh, face then what happened what, how did the uh, 12th Imam Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif performs, perform, performed his responsibilities after the death of his father Ali Salatu Salam we have representation, the time of representation, the era of representation. Representation means that someone who is representing the 12th Imam, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, there is someone who is appointed by the Imam, Alayhi Salatu As we all know, that there are two types of representation for the 12th Imam, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. One is the appointed representation. And another one is absolute or unappointed or unspecified representation. The appointed one, Imam appoints Fulan, so and so person is my representative. The unappointed Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, gives us certain criteria. If you find uh, the, these criteria or these qualities or these properties in a person, then that person is my representative which is nowadays we have the mujtahideen who are qualified to perform ijtihad and they are uh, our maraja, they are mubra'il al-dhimma they are considered representative of our beloved 12th imam based on the criteria which was set forth by our beloved imam but the, the, the specific representation happened uh, in uh, after uh, for a time of 60 or 69 years after the death of Imam Hassan al Askari, in this time, Imam Ali Salatu Sam would appoint a representative. If that dies, Imam would appoint another one. If that dies, and so on. After the fourth representative, Imam did not appoint anybody, and that's when the general representation started as obvious representation. What do you mean by obvious representation? That means the scholars, they became representative of the 12th Imam, those, those fuqaha, those mujtahideen. So why do we say obvious? Because the fuqaha were there. The fuqaha were there. And they were representing our a'immas, alayhi salatu Like Abdul Azim al-Hassani. Abdul Azim al-Hassani was representative of Imam Hassan al-Askar and Imam Ali al-Hadi in Tehran. In Iran, 
If you go in southern part of Tehran, there is a city called Rai or Shahr Rai or Medina to Rai. The city of Rai has a big shrine, golden shrine. Uh, there is one of the representative, uh, the, uh, the Abdul Azim. We call him Shah Abdul Azim or Sayyid Abdul Azim. He's buried there. Before that, Imam Sadiq used to appoint representatives. So there were representations before even the minor occultation. In the time of Imam, for people who were, uh, uh, who were living far away, our Imam they used to direct them, they used to tell them, why do you come here or why do you struggle to ask us uh, in Medina? You have Fulan, son of Fulan, he is our representative, ask him. So this was the, the our Aimas, they prepared the system of representation. And it became more, uh, more, more active and more intense in the time of al askariyain because the time of the occultation was closed. So when the time of occultation came, people, they were not surprised from the concept of representation. Why? Because people in Tehran, people in Damascus, people in, in Kufa, people, they used to have scholars who were representing our Aimmas in Medina, in the city of the Prophet So th th there were, wherever they were, wherever there were Shias, there were clusters of Shias, when they don't find, or it was difficult for them to communicate with the Imam, they would find someone who is representing the Imam. So the idea of the, uh, the representative, uh, representative of Imam was not a new idea, it was there. The difference between uh, the minor occultation and the time where our Imams were there, is that now the Imam is completely in occultation. That means the representative is now not just for the city of Qom or city of Rai or city of Kufa or city. No, he's a representative in general for all the Shias wherever they are. That's, that's the difference between the representation in the times of infallibles and in the time of the minor occultation. That means this representative is acting on behalf of Imam in general, not in specific region. That was the difference. So we see today, insha'Allah, we are going to talk about these four representatives who were specified, who were appointed. Many times people might say, okay, we don't know. Maybe this concept of occultation was fabricated, was created. Maybe these representatives who claim to be representatives were the ones who made this whole faith of Shiism and religion of Shiism or direction of occultation and all these kind of things. So in order to respond to that, we will say, okay, we have evidences. We have evidences from the time of Imam Ali al-Hadi alayhi salatu Not just in uh, minor occultation. It's not that we didn't have anything and just that uh, the Imam, Imam Hassan al-Askari died and here these people, they came and they said we are representatives. No, there, were, there, are, there are historical quotes narrated by trusted narrators they indicate that these representatives, the first representative was also the representative of Imam Ali al-Hadi the grandfather of 12th Imam. And he was also the representative of the 12th Imam Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif and representative of Imam Hassan al-Askari. So this first representative, his name is Uthman ibn Sa'id al-Amri. Uthman, son of Sa'id al-Amri. Some, uh, uh, some say because, uh, because of some circumstances, Imam Ali Salatu Sam gave them, uh, gave this person a ti the title of Al Amri. To me, and he and his son, they both were represented. First, his, the father, the second. So instead of me repeating Uthman, Uthman, Uthman every time, I will just say Al Amri, the father, and Al Amri, the son, to make it more easier. Because this is a word of Ain, sometimes, you know, I, I might cough out something. So, uh, so, so let's say Amri the father, because Al Amri and. Uh, so let's say one Ain, Al Amri the father and Al Amri the son. So we have Al Amri the father. Al Amri the father, he was representative of Imam Ali al Hadi. How can you prove that? Let's take the evidence. Imam, Imam Ali al Hadi, alayhi salatu uh, Al Amri the father, he was sitting, he said, هو أبو عمر الثقة الأمين الثقة means trustworthy الأمين means trusted أمانة you can secure you can secure your trust in his hand 
So he is trusted and trustworthy. Al-thiqatul amin. Thiqa means, the, uh, tongue-wise, he will never lie. Thiqa means trusted in his tongue. Amin means trusted when you handle him a trust. He will not violate or betray your trust. So these are two different, wor two different words. You know, because when you say trustworthy, trusted, it might not make any sense in English. But in Arabic, these two words are very important words. That means if they tell you something, they are not lying. That means if you handle them anything, khums or any money or any kind of trust, they will not violate. So these two words are small, like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As sadiq al amin, as sadiq in his tongue and amin people. So so even non-believers they used to give trust to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Though they disagreed with his religion, with Islam, with, but they knew that this person never ever betrays a trust. So these two words are very important, especially if a person is leading religious congregation or religious responsibility or religious authority, he needs to have these two things. Why? Because we are, we are listening to him and based on his words, we are doing taqlid, we are following. We are, we are implementing. So we need to know that this mujtahid, this marja is trusted in his tongue. That means if we do our taqlid, we are satisfied that because he's not cheating us. He's not lying us. And then we give our responsibilities. We, go, we give our khums money. We got kafara, zakat, all these kind of things. We give to our marja. That means he has amana. So these two important words are very important in defining a representative. So Imam Ali al-Hadi alayhi salatu wasalam, the grandfather of our beloved twelve, he says that, هذا أبو عمر الثقة الأمين ما قاله لكم فعني يقوله Whatever he says to you, then he is telling you on my behalf. That means whatever, ما قاله, whatever, whatever he says, that's, that's a very, very, very um, like precise testimony of Imam Ali Salatu. Whatever he says, that means this person is so pious that he will never ever dare to say something which was not authentic or not indicated by the narrations of infallible Ali Salatu. This much trust that who, whatever he says, then he says on my behalf. Ma qalahu. فَعَنِّي يَقُولُهُ مَا قَالُهُ مَا قَالَهُ لَكُمْ فَعَنِّي يَقُولُهُ وَمَا أَدَّاهُ إِلَيْكُمْ فَعَنِّي يُؤَدِّيهُ And whatever duties he's fulfilling, then he is fulfilling on my behalf. أَدَاءُ الْوَاجِبَاتِ أَدَاءُ الْمَسْؤُولِيَةِ أَدَاءُ That means he's fulfilling. Whatever he's fulfilling, then he's fulfilling on my behalf. It's a very precise and straightforward representation in trust in the tongue and trust in his responsibilities. Then Imam Hassan al-Askari, the father of the twelve, he says, Hada Abu Amr. These are very important indications. The reason I'm mentioning, because there's a doubt created. That, that, that these are like, these are, she, these are al amri and father, and they are the one they fabricated the whole issue of occultation. There is no twelfth Imam. We, 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 in our last sessions, we, we presented several indications and evidences that the twelfth Imam, Ajallahu Ta'ala Faraj Sharif, was born. There were several witnesses. Now let's see the continuation out of our 12th Imam Ali Salatu Let's see that after the death of Imam Hassan al-Askari, what is the indication of his existence? These representatives, they indicate. So, Thiqatul Madi, Imam Hassan al-Askari says, he is the trusted of the past ones, like his father. Wa thiqati and my trusted. Fil mahya wal mamat. Many people say, okay, uh, some of the representatives of the Imam, they used to deviate. They like uh, Al Bata'ini, Abu Ali ibn Hamza Al Bata'ini, he was the trusted treasurer of Imam Musa Al Kadhim alayhi salatu wasalam. After Imam Musa Al Kadhim alayhi salatu wasalam died, he took all the wealth and deviated, deviated from the path. So this person, the, the ulama of Al Mirajal, they, they, they debate should we take this narration of Ali ibn Hamza because he was trusted in the time of Kadhim and not trusted in the time of Rudha alayhi salatu wasalam. So, what should we do? So, there's a debate. So, there are people who might deviate after the death. Imam Hassan al Askari guarantees this. He is that he's my trusted. Then he's, he's trusted after my death also. So his trust is going to continue. فَمَا قَالَهُ لَكُمْ 
whatever he says on my behalf, whatever he tells you, فَعَنِّي يَقُولُهُ Then he tells you on my behalf. وَمَا أَدَّى إِلَيْكُمْ Whatever he fulfills his responsibility, then he is fulfilling on my behalf. Then another quote, Imam Hassan al-Askari, there was a delegation from Yemen, they came. They wanted uh, someone from Imam Hassan al-Askari. Imam Hassan al-Askari looks at the Al-Amri, the father, and says, In the Uthman, فَإِنَّكَ الْوَكِيلِ Go, you are the representative. وَالثِّقَةِ And you are the trusted. المأمون على مال الله You are the trusted المأمون you are, you are secured you, you will not betray the trust On the wealth which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Or the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Which is given So all these narrations And there are plenty I just brought some few examples There are plenty narrations Which indicate the trustworthiness Of the father Al-Amri Father Al-Amri. And if you recall in the, in the history that this is the same person who was, the, who was the, when, the, when the 12th Imam was born, Imam Hassan al-Askari told him to distribute 1,000 bread, 1,000 uh, bread and 1,000 meat and all those kind of things and do the aqiqah for the 12th Imam Ajallahu ta'ala farjun. He's the same person who was in the, in the funeral prayer and observing everything, what happens when Imam Ali Salatu Sam came and, and, and pulled the, the cloak of his father and uh, his uncle, I'm sorry, the Akhariya Am, back off, step back aside, step aside, uncle. I am more, more rightful on offering the salat on my father. So he was observing and he has been there and every time. In, uh, in one of the narrations it mentions because we mentioned that after that Imam prayed and then what happened? Then uh, somebody asks Jafar, who was he? Uh, uh, Jafar says that, I don't know, I have never seen him. In one other narration, it is mentioned that people, they saw that there's a boy. So they started to chase him somehow, and he went into the basement of the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, and then he was not seen after that. But Say, Sayyid Muhammad al-Sadr, rahmatullah, he did not bring this narration. So after salat, he was chased, like somebody whispered that that's the boy who is the heir, and the, 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 the soldier or the army man, they went and they chased this, uh, this boy, and he went into the basement, and after that, they, they could not find him. So this is, he was known, Al-Amri, the father, he was known by these three Imams, he was presented by these three Imams. So everybody from the Shia's followers, they knew Al-Amri, the father. This much was his status. Then what happened? Uh, Al-Amri, he just, he was a representative for five years only. After the death of Imam Hassan al-Askari, he was representative of five. What, what, what was he doing like? What was he representing? Shias, they have problems. They have Messiah. Now, nowadays, how you write to your mujtahid, nowadays even you write it on the email, on the internet, and their answer comes to you from your marja. The system is not new. In our days, we used to, we used to write letters to Sayyid Abul Qasim al-Khui, Najaf al-Ashraf, and it would take months to, to go and to come back. And before, it would take uh, maybe years. So uh, this writing the letter to the marja or to the faqih, it was from that time. These people, they have problems, they have masail, they have issues. They will write a letter to the 12th Imam Ajallahu Ta'ala for Jesus. Who's the post office? Who's the mailman? The representative. They will come and they will give these letters to the representative, the Amri, the father, and after that, the three others. He will take these letters and give it to the 12th Imam Ajallahu Ta'ala for Jesus. Imam will write with his own blessed hand and blessed writing. And he had a seal, which, which nobody could copy that seal. And the, the letter will be sealed and signed by the Imam alayhi salatu The response will come. Okay, how will we know that this is really the Imam who was writing all these 70 years? Maybe these, these, these representatives, they were writing. Number one, the calligraphy. The writing was same. It was 70 years. From the time of the first representative until the time of the last representative. The writing was same, it never changed. Let's say uh, father Amri and son Amri, they had almost same, but they could not be exactly. Let's say exactly. What about Hussein ibn Ruh, the third representative? What about, what about the fourth representative? So the writing was same, number one. Number two, many of these letters contained predictions. Like Fulan is going to be cured after five years. 
Fulan is going to die after six days. Fulan, is, this is going to happen to him. Fulan will come. These are unknown things, unseen things, ghayb. That means these people, either they have ghayb, the representatives, or they are communicating with someone who has ghayb. And these letters, they contain these kind of things. We'll take a few examples of these letters, that there were predictions inside it. So the only one who can predict is only imam or a prophet. So that's why this was the situation that Shias, they will communicate it to, uh, with the Imam through these representatives and the letters will come signed and sealed by the beloved Imam And then the 12th Imam Sharif. We mentioned the testimony of Imam Ali al-Hadi, testimony of Imam Hassan al-Askari. Let's see what Imam says. min Uthman ma This was a letter written to the Shia. وَانْتَهُوا إِلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ That means if he commands you, then bow to it. Then do not argue. Take from him. بَلُوا قَوْلَهُ فَهُوَ خَلِيفَةَ إِمَامِكُمْ He is the successor of your Imam. وَالْأَمْرُ إِلَيْهِ And the command, the authority is in the hand of the Imam. So if Imam appoints him as, your, as, your, as, a, as a representative, your successor, then you have to take it because Imam has every command. So this is one of the indications. And uh, we all know that this was pious person and everybody knew him. When he was dying, he appointed his son, Muhammad al-Amri, Muhammad bin Uthman al-Amri. His son, okay, what are the indications of his representations through infallibles? Let's take the 12th Imam Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah Sharif. When his father died, a letter was received by the son. What does he say? Imam is offering condolence to the son. Imam is offering his condolence to the son. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Tasliman li amrih. Submitting to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa rida'an bi qada'ih. Pleasing with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he addresses. Asha abuka sa'idan. Your father lived happily. وَمَاتَ حَمِيدًا And died with praise. فَرَحِمَهُ الله, May Allah's blessing be upon him. وَأَلْحَقَهُ بِأَوْلِيَاءِ And may Allah unite him with his authorities. وَمَوَالِيهِ And masters. فَلَمْ يَزَلْ مُجْتَهِدًا he was, uh, he was continuously striving for what? فِي أَمْرِهِمْ In the affairs of the Ahlul Bayt, in his affairs of his masters, affairs of his uh, authorities. Sa'iyan fi ma yuqarribuhu ila Allahi Azza wa Jal. He was always working towards pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or doing whatever makes him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nadhar Allahu wajha. May Allah make his face delighted. Wa aqala athrata. And forgive his shortcomings. Ajzal Allahu laka thawab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. وَأَحْسَنَ لَكَ الْعَزَى And make the reward of your grief on your father better. Because whenever a person is grieving, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we say, عَظَّمَ اللَّهُ أَجْرَكْ You know, maybe if you translate it uh, in, uh, like uh, literally, it will, it will not make sense. Okay, if I, I am, I have, uh, some beloved one have died from me, and you're telling me, may Allah make my reward great on what, you know? So, no, ajrak ala sabrika, because you have musibah and you are in patience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. So, adham Allahu ajrak, may Allah greaten your reward on your patience on this grief. So this long sentence, we don't say it, we just say, adham Allahu ajrak, in Arabic, ahsan Allahu lak al aza ruzayta wa ruzayna. You have been afflicted with this, 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 this grief. And we also are afflicted. We are also sad. You are sad. We are sad. The 12th Imam is addressing the son, Muhammad al-Umri. And we know that you became lonely because of his departure. And we also became lonely because of his departure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him happy in his return. كَانَ مِنْ كَمَالِ سَعَادَتِهِ it was the perfect happiness of this your father. And رزقه, الله تعالى, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him. Waladan mithlaka. 
a son like you. This is Imam. This is the 12th Imam talking to Muhammad al-Amri. Yukhlifuhu min ba'da. He's uh, the, the, a son which will succeed him after him. So Imam Ali salatu wasalam is giving indication. وَيَقُومُ مَقَامَهُ بِأَمْرَهِ that means with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the 12th Imam is telling me that it is not me who is appointing you. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command to appoint you. So bi amri, bi amri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, someone who, replace, who replaces him, wa yatarahham alayh, and send his mercies on him. Wa aqul, the 12th Imam says, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. Fa inna al-anfusu, fa inna al-anfusa, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the souls are happy with you. Tayyibatan bi makanik. We are satisfied with you. Don't worry. Wama ja'alahu Allahu laka. On whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you, in you and with you. A'anak Allah. Now Imam is doing dua for him, making dua. May Allah give you strength, support you. Wa qawwaka, give you strength. Wa abadaka, will support you. And wafaqaka, and give you success. Wa kana laka. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your authority, waliyan, wahafidha, he will protect you, waraiyan, take care of you, wa kafiyan, and will be sufficient for you. So this is the 12th Imam, to the second representative, giving all this praise. That means the second representative was appointed by the 12th Imam. Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salatu in the beginning I mentioned this quote, he said, when people they ask him, uh, what do you think about al-Amri? He said, al-Amri, the Amri, the father, wabnahu and his son, thiqatan, they both are trusted. فَمَا أَدَّيَا anni. Whatever they fulfill from their responsibilities, فَمَا أَدَّيَا فَعَنِّي يُؤَدِّيَان Whatever they fulfill, they fulfill those responsibilities on our behalf. وَمَا قَالَ لَكَ And whatever they tell you, they both are both of them. فَعَنِّي يَقُولَان They both are telling you on our, my behalf. فَاسْمَعْ لَهُمَا Not just the father, father and son. Listen to them. وَأَطِعْهُمَا Obey both of them. فَإِنَّهُمَا الثِّقَتَانَ الْمَأْمُونَانَ See? Al-thiqa al amin Our a'imma, they keep repeating trusted and tr the, the person who's secured in trust also. And uh, Imam Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif also continued. This second representative has a big history. He's, he's the, he has the lengthiest rep uh, representation of the imam. First representative was only for five years. The second one was for 40 years. 40 years, the lengthiest. He became so famous in the east of the uh, uh, Islamic world to the west of the Islamic world, north, south. He became so popular, in the, the, this one. And he was so pious. He, was, he buried the, the grave, his grave by himself and he wrote on a piece of plank the ayat from the Quran and he wrote the names of the infallibles and people, they ask him, what are you doing? What are you preparing? He says, I'm preparing uh, my grave. And I wish, that I, 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 I wish that I will be buried on this plank and in this grave. He used to go inside his grave every night, recite one juz of the Qur'an. Juz, one part, that means like we have 30 parts of the Qur'an, he used to recite. Subhanallah, the recitation of the Qur'an for the Imams والسلام, and for the infallibles, it is a regular thing. For us, unfortunately, for most of us, we remember Quran only in the holy month of Ramadan or Khira. Shaykhna, we want Khira, Stikhara. That's good. But this is not the only purpose Quran was descended. Or we'll put it on the shelf for the blessing. On, in the car, we'll have this small Quran which, can, which cannot be read even. You know, I don't know, was Quran descended just to be written in the writing which cannot be read? You know, like, no, this is for the jinns to read, you know. We have big Qurans. This is like whoever evil people, evil entities, they try to attack us, they can read the Quran. I don't understand. Do all that, that's fine. Quran has metaphysical blessing, but that is not the main purpose of the Holy Quran. It is a constitution, it has guidance. We only, if every day we all commit ourselves, to read the whole Qur'an. What are you talking, Shaykh? Are you crazy? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. If every day we commit ourselves to read one verse of the Qur'an, ayah, ayah, one ayah only of the Qur'an, is it too much? 
No way. It's not going to take one minute. If you have time to watch uh, uh, shows on the TV, watch Spider-Man, watch Harry Potter, all, all kind of things, you know, take some t steal some time out. This one ayat every day in the house, it is recited, it blesses the house, it becomes like a chandelier of the house, it brings blessing, it brings angels, and what else? You learn. Every day, read one ayat of the Quran, and contemplate in it. It's not too much. No, Shaykh, Ayatuddin is like, uh, like uh, two, 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 two surahs or something. No. If that's the case, break that ayat. Ayatuddin, ayat of loan, break it. Two lines, read two lines, make a commitment to yourself to practice reciting the Quran because Quran is the light, not to your intellect, to your soul also, to your spirit. Quran destroys these impurities which surround our soul, which the contaminations which, which we complain, oh Shaykh, I cannot avoid the sins. Try to recite that, try to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mentioned in the ahadith that if you want to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then recite dua. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to talk to you, what a great honor, mighty king, God, lord of the world, talking to you, that's a great honor, then recite Quran. If you want, if you really want to, don't recite Quran that it's a book, no, no, recite it like it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to you. It is the kalamullah. No religion has and honor the way Islam has that direct word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secured. We have it, but yet we don't appreciate it. This is the, this is the habit of our a'imma, our sufara. Every day he will go inside, the, inside his grave, he will recite the whole Quran. He doesn't freak out, oh no, I don't want to go inside the grave, I, I, I don't want to see the grave. No, why? Because they have, they have sold their life. They, they are waiting. Where the plane will come, will, will, which will carry them to the akhirah. They're waiting. When is, the, when is the, why is the flight so late? Why is the flight late? Why is the flight late? They want, because they believe in the hereafter, which is greater than this world. Therefore, this was the, this was the, this was the way, the nature of our companions of our a'imma alayhi salatu They were so attached to the Quran. They were so glued to the Quran. We wish it can, if we can glue ourselves to the one ayat of the Quran. And unfortunately, in the holy month of Ramadan, many of the youth, I don't see them practicing. I ask, I ask, did you recite Quran? Many of them, there are few, they do. But many, unfortunately, they have, they have, they have hujran, they have, they have migrated the Quran, they have abandoned the Quran. And these are one of the signs of the end time that Quran will be kept aside. This is what we are living, and unfortunately. So, after this time, one, another person comes and asks this uh, Safir, this representative, second representative. He asks him, why do you keep uh, looking into your grave? Why do you keep... He tells him here that I have been commanded to wrap up. Fajma amraka. The twelfth imam has told them, that's it. This is, this is your life, it's done. Soon you are going to depart. So fajma. So I'm wrapping up, I'm collecting everything to be prepared to leave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, هذه قبري تكون فيه أوضع عليها. This قبر, in, in it, this, they are going to put this plank, I'm going to be kept on it. وأنا في كل يوم أنزل Every day he goes, recites the Quran and comes. How did he know the specific date and time of his death? Certain day, from certain month, from certain year, I will depart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I will be buried in here. The narrator says, that I was observing when the time came, when the day came, from that month, from that day, he died. Now let's say these representatives were fabricators. How did they know something which is not known except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is, this, is this is unseen, this is ghaib. So only Imam alayhi salatu has this kind of thing. And Imam is trying to tell the people that I am the one who is informing these kind of indications. So take from him. So this was the second representative. And the third representative was Al-Husayn ibn Ruh al-Nawbakhti. Al-Husayn ibn Ruh al-Nawbakhti. Al-Husayn ibn Ruh al-Nawbakhti 
when, uh, when, uh, when the time of Muhammad ibn Uthman or Muhammad the son, Al-Amri the son comes, he makes the wasiyat. He tells the people that the one who is going to represent me, I have been commanded to tell you, he is going to be Abu Al-Qasim al Hussein ibn Ruh. Here the historian observed two personalities. One personality, his name was Abu Ja'far. Abu Ja'far, Batil at the end. This Abu Ja'far was very close to Imam Hassan, uh, 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 close to Muhammad al-Amri. He was very close person. Hussein ibn Ruh was close also. But uh, Abu Ja'far was more closer. Imam Haz uh, uh, I'm sorry, Muhammad al-Amri, when his death came close, he used, he, uh, he, uh, he used to avoid eating food except from the house of Abu Ja'far. People, they thought that Abu Ja'far is going to be the representative. Imam, uh, the, I, I keep t uh, saying Imam, Abu uh, al, al Muhammad al Amri, the, 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 the second representative, when he was lying on the bed, bed his term, uh, uh, he was in his terminal sickness, he was uh, in his end days, Abu Ja'far was sitting beside the head of Al Amri. And Hussein ibn Ruh was sitting beside the leg. So he asks him, Abu Ja'far, who is going to be your successor? Uh, Abu uh, Al Amri looks at Hussein ibn Ruh. He says, "I have been given command to appoint him as my successor." Now, see, this person was very close to Imam uh, to Al Amri. Abu Jafar was very close to Al Amri. People they might feel, "Oh, what's happening? I am so close, and this person is going to take the successorship." This person, people they thought that Abu Jafar is going to be because his close relation with Al Amri. What did Abu Ja'far do? He stood up, he came to Abu, uh, Abu Al-Qasim, Hussein ibn Ruh, he took his hand and he brought him beside Al-Amri. He said, you are the one. Submission! He did not have grudge. Oh, why? He did not uh, um, become annoyed and left the room. Why? I am supposed to be. No. Submission. He, w he goes beside the leg of Al-Amri, takes al Hussein ibn Ruh, brings him beside the, beside Al-Amri, this is how, how they submit, because they know this command is from the beloved Imam Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Therefore, they have to submit to the Imam. And finally, there's a lot to talk, but the time has squeezed us. And finally, the last Safir, the last representative was Ali ibn Muhammad al-Samri. Or a Samari, or a Saimari, or a Saimari. There are different ways to pronounce uh, in the history. Now, Ali ibn Muhammad is summary. There is a strange thing. There is no appointing. There is no appointing of Ali ibn Muhammad is summary. There must be. It might have got lost in the history. How did we? How then? Then why do we say these are four, these are fourth representative? Al Amri, Masha Allah, we have enough evidences. Ibnahu, we have enough evidences. Al Hussein ibn Ruh was appointed by Al Amri and by the twelfth Imam in a signature. In a letter, what about Ali ibn Muhammad is Samari? There is no indication. So how do we, why do we consider him fourth? Because when he was dying, a letter, that letter, we, we have it. That letter tells uh, Ali ibn Muhammad is Samari, that's it. Now there is going to be no representation. That means you are the last one. I'll just read this quickly because the time has caught up. The twelfth Imam sends a letter to that means when Shias they were submitting and they were they did not have any disagreement that Ali bin Muhammad is Samari or Samari was the representative. That means that there, there must be something, there must be clear indication. Another thing, he used to take the letters, take them to the Imam. Imam will bring uh, Imam will write the answers, he will bring back the answers. That is another indication. The third indication, the strong indication. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the twelfth Imam is talking. Ya Ali ibn Muhammad al-Samari, O Ali, son of Muhammad al-Samari, A'zam Allahu ajraka, ajra ikhwanika fika. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the reward of your brothers in you greater, in missing you. You are going to die, you know. You are going to die. Uh, Imam is telling Ali ibn Muhammad al-Samari that you are going to die. That, that you wrap up everything, you know. فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ For sure you are going to die. 
ما بينك وبين between you and the death ستة أيام six days فجمع أمرك collect your affairs that means wrap up ولا توصي إلى أحد do not represent to anybody do not appoint it to anybody this is last this is final فيقوم مقامك so that he will replace you no don't appoint anybody who will replace you after your death فقد وقعت الغيبة التامة the major occultation has been started. Once you die, the major occultation. فَلَا ظُهُور There will be no appearance إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَلِكَ بَعْدَ طُولِ الْأَمَدِ After the long time. وَقَسَّاوَةِ الْقُلُوبِ And the stubbornness of the heart. People, they will have stubborn, stubborn stiff hearts. They will not have lenience. They will not have this kind of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not have mercy. They will, the, the strong will eat the weak. All these kind of things we are going to talk later on. وَامْتِلَاءِ الْأَرْضِ جَوْرًا And the earth will be filled with tyranny. وَسَيَأْتِ لِشِيَعَتِ This is important. And these are the last two statements. And there will be a time for my Shi'as. The 12th Imam is talking. My Shi'as, من يدعي المشاهدة Where there will be people, they will be claiming that we saw the 12th Imam. ألا فمن ادعي المشاهدة If someone claims that, that he has seen me قبل خروج السفياني Before the coming of the Sufyani, he will be from the descendant of Abu Sufyan, we are going to talk about it. Was Saiha, the scream. So if somebody says, I've seen the 12th Imam, before the Sufyani and the scream, فَهُوَ كَذَّابٌ مُفْتَرْ He's a liar and a, fabric, a, li a fabricated liar, a fabricator liar. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ What does that mean? We have great ulamas, they saw the 12th Imam. We have pious personalities, they met with the 12th Imam. So what does this mean? Here Imam, our ulama say, Mushahada, these people, these representatives, they used to say, I saw the Imam and he appointed me. So Mushahada means that seeing the Imam, giving him the representation, the specific representation. This is how they used to say that I saw the Imam. So this kind of Mushahada is not going to happen. People, they will see the Imam. In history, we have like more than 100 stories where we are going to mention some of the pious great scholars like Allama Bahr al-Uloom and Allama al-Halli, they saw the 12th Imam. So what does this mean? This means, they say that, that there are two opinions. They say that one, they will see the 12th Imam, but while they, they are seeing him, they will not know him. And most of the stories, when they meet the 12th Imam, when the 12th Imam leaves, then they realize, oh, this was the 12th Imam. Another thing, the, the mushahadat, uh, that, that means they, they see, they see the 12th Imam giving them the representation. So these are the two different opinions. And as I mentioned, it is interpreted. Why? Because there are many pious people who could never ever lie. They saw the 12th Imam and they were visited and they visited the 12th Imam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before we end, the last word, the people they came to Ali bin Muhammad is summary, they ask him, there is no representation, there is no one, he says, لِلَّهِ أَمْرٌ هُوَ بَالِغُهُ and died. These were the last one, that Allah subhanahu, the command is in, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is going to fulfill it. And then he died. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll continue, and we'll take some of the activities of these four representatives, these great blessed personalities in our history. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us among the loyal and sincere supporters of our beloved 12th Imam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the appearance of our 12th Imam soon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the, this holy month, the month of peace, prosperity, dignity, full with faith and, and peace for all the, uh, all the human around the world, especially our brothers and sisters around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless all our marhumin who have left, left this world. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tahirin.